This is where we're spending our spring break. This is Gulf Waters RV Resort. We've been here several times in different spots. This particular time we have a really nice corner spot complete with bar, back seating area, and a really nice yard. Hey guys, so I want to do a video that talks about what the very best truck could be if you're going to be hauling a truck camper or a camper that sits in the bed of your truck. First of all, you have to determine how big of a truck camper you're looking for. They range in weight from anywhere around 2,000 pounds all the way up to about 5,000 pounds or greater depending on the manufacturer as well as the living accommodations, how it's set up inside. Some of the things you want to consider is how long you're going to be staying in it. Also what the application is going to be. Are you going to be moving around everywhere? Is it just for short trips? Is it for longer trips? Things like that. A lot of people have turned truck campers into their full-time living accommodations. And if that's the case, you're generally going to want a longer one. Now, this video is not going to so much focus around truck campers themselves as it is the types of trucks that you might want to look at if you're getting a truck camper. The first thing to consider is whether you want to go half ton, three quarter ton, or one ton truck. When I mean one ton, I'm talking about Chevrolet 3500, Ram 3500, Ford F350, and Ford F450 pickup trucks. Basically, dually pickup trucks. Or if you're going to be looking at three-quarter ton or one ton single rear wheel trucks. Now, the other option, of course, is half ton trucks. And there's a lot of folks that'll put these campers in the back of a half ton truck. Just keep in mind that that's not necessarily recommended simply because half ton trucks aren't really designed for that type of payload capacity. Yes, some people do it. I know there's folks on YouTube that do it. And then they'll put airbags or helper springs or Adelie's, things like that to their truck. But they're just not really designed for it from a frame structure perspective as well as a suspension perspective. So you're essentially adding equipment to your truck to prevent it from sagging but you're still going over the payload capacity of these trucks. So regardless if it's a F-150, a Chevy 1500, a Ram 1500, you know, even Nissan Titans, the thing you have to keep in mind is that the maximum payload capacity on a properly equipped half-ton truck is gonna be about 2,000 pounds. In some cases, it'll go a little higher than that, but in most cases, if you opt for a crew cab configuration or even a super cab configuration in four-wheel drive, the payload capacity is going to drop down to the 1,100 to 1,500 pound payload capacity. The max payload capacity option on a half-ton truck is generally a configuration that's a regular cab with a short bed two-wheel drive truck. The more weight you add to the curb weight of the truck, the lower the payload capacity of that truck is going to be. Also, the suspension on half-ton trucks is far softer than it is on three-quarter ton trucks. So a half-ton truck is going to want to sway and lean far more around turns, around any type of aggressive turning, than a three-quarter ton or a one-ton truck. Adding a larger aftermarket sway bar as well as airbags can help control some of that, but the springs themselves are inherently softer as well. So you have a far more likely chance of rollover as well as stopping problems and even acceleration problems, plus wear and tear on the chassis of the vehicle. Now, if you're gonna get a three quarter ton truck up, whether it's a single rear wheel truck or a dually, it's usually best to opt for a truck with a camper package. The camper package is generally gonna get you an overload spring for the rear end as well as a sway bar. Sway bars are very, very important if you're gonna put a camper in the back of a truck primarily because it's going to prevent the truck from rocking side to side as easily as a truck without a sway bar. It's essentially a long bar that spans both sides of the axle and curves up over the differential. And it's designed to act as like a spring to where it reduces the amount of roll that the truck has inherently in it. And a sway bar is going to dramatically reduce the amount of side to side roll that the vehicle has under normal and off-road driving conditions. So it's pretty mandatory if you're going to be hauling any type of a truck camper in the back of your vehicle. Now three quarter ton and one ton trucks, whether single rear wheel or dually trucks, are far more equipped to haul truck campers, mainly because their springs are much, much stiffer than the springs you're going to see on a half ton truck inherently. So when you get in a half ton truck, you drive down the road, you go over some bumps, it's going to feel more like a car soft ride. If you get in a three quarter ton and a one ton truck, it's going to feel much more harsh. And that's mainly because the springs are designed to be used under load. 
So when you put a truck camper in the back of a pickup truck, whether it's a three quarter ton or a one ton truck, it's gonna put enough weight on those springs that it allows those springs to work more effectively. It'll actually smoothen out the ride. In some cases, you're still gonna to wanna to consider airbags or helper springs or other things simply because the back end of the truck may squat under the weight of the camper, whatever one it might be. Again, pay very close attention to the weight of the camper you're buying versus the payload capacity of the truck. Even three quarter ton trucks with camper packages can sometimes have a maximum payload capacity around 2,500 pounds. And that being the case, that's actually a pretty light and a pretty small camper. If you're looking at putting a long bed camper in the back of your truck or one that extends to an eight foot bed, those can weigh upwards of 3,300 to 6,000 pounds depending on the material it's made out of and the manufacturer. So in those cases, that camper would definitely be more than what the truck is rated to handle. Three quarter ton trucks and one ton trucks, both being single rear, are generally gonna be built very similar. A lot of times the only difference is gonna be an overload leaf spring as well as a taller rear suspension block. And that's to give the back of the truck a slight rake. So when you put a camper in the back of a, say an F-250, it may squat more than an F-350 simply because the F-350 is probably gonna have an overload spring as well as taller blocks. So it's gonna rest at a much more flat level stance than say an F-250. Now, if you take an F-250 and you put a helper spring in it, or if you lift the back of it slightly with a taller block, then you might have that same even resting platform once the camper's on the back. Now, ideally, the very best truck you can get for hauling a truck camper is going to be a dually. Most new duallys are gonna come with eight foot beds. Some of the older ones opted for a six and a half foot bed, but most of them are eight foot beds. With an eight foot bed, it's gonna of course give you more real estate in your truck camper, but it's also gonna help the truck handle the weight better, as well as give you more control, especially from a side to side rolling motion, simply because you're gonna have stiffer springs than even a three quarter ton truck, plus increased payload capacity. One of the big benefits of moving to a dually is the fact that they generally have two to 3,000 pounds additional payload capacity on top of a three quarter ton truck. So most three quarter ton configurations, if they are an extended cab or a crew cab, are going to be between 2,500 pounds to 3,000 pounds maximum payload. On a dually, the range is generally between 4,500 pounds and 6,700 pounds as far as payload capacity across the three main manufacturers. So overall, a dually is going to provide you with the payload capacity that you need to really haul pretty much any type of truck camper you'd want. Plus, the increased width of the truck is also going to add to the stability. The stiffer springs will also decrease the amount of sway that you can have inherently when you're turning. The stiffer rear leaf springs are also going to improve your ability to change lanes without swaying or rocking side to side, as well as just general stability when you're going down the road. In some cases, you may still want to add airbags to your vehicle, simply because when you put a 4,000 pound camper in the back of a pickup truck, regardless of it being a dually or not, you're generally going to want to squat slightly. And airbags do a great job at leveling out the ride. Another thing, dualies offer you redundant tires. Essentially, because you're going to have four tires in the back, if you ever experience a rear tire failure with that much weight in the back, you're going to have other tires that can then take the load to allow you to safely pull over. So from a towing perspective, from a safety perspective as well, just having those extra two tires in the back can be a lifesaver in some cases if you're able to exit the highway safely versus blowing out the back tire and the load shifting so aggressively that the truck essentially swerves into an accident. Now, when it comes to a truck camper, diesel or gas is not such a big deal. Whether you opt for one or the other is going to be personal preference. Truck campers do add a significant amount of weight and they do add some drag to the vehicle. So you are going to probably hunt down a diesel vehicle because it'll provide you better fuel economy as well as better acceleration and in many cases better stopping. However, you're not hauling a massive load behind the vehicle, so stopping isn't as much of a concern as it would be as if you're hauling a fifth wheel or a travel trailer or something heavy behind the vehicle. The payload over the back, in some cases, can actually give you improved traction for your brakes if you have to lock them up simply because the weight on the tires on the ground are going to improve your stopping in some cases. Now, in many cases, a gas engine is going to be perfectly fine for hauling a truck camper. Again, you're not talking about 20,000 pounds. You're not talking about 15,000 or even 10,000 pounds. Generally, you're going to be talking about truck campers weighing anywhere between about 2,200 and 3,300 pounds. So a gas engine would be more than adequate for that. And in many cases, may even give you improved fuel economy on the highway versus a diesel engine. Not all the time, but in some cases. 
The main thing you want to keep in mind if you're looking at going to a truck camper is ensuring that the truck that you buy is reliable. Because if you put a truck camper on the back of your truck and your truck's not reliable, well in essence if you're camping and you break down, you're kind of in the same situation as if you owned a motorhome. Whereas the engine of your vehicle dies, well that's the engine of your home. So if it has to go to the shop, where are you going to stay? It's actually something that I saw on the way back from the beach the other day. I passed a tow truck that was pulling a pickup truck with a camper on the back of it. And both of the occupants of the camper were sitting in the passenger seat of the tow truck with the tow truck driver. So what ends up happening if that truck's in the shop for a week? Do the owners of the truck and camper have accommodations or budget to be able to support them during that period of time? And then finally, do your research when it comes to what type of camper you're going to buy. Look at the different floor plans, but more importantly, look at the weight, look at the length, and make sure that you're looking at a camper that's going to fit the type of truck you're looking for as well as not going to overweigh the truck, not going to put too much weight on a vehicle you might be looking at. In some cases, you can find a wonderful looking truck camper, but if it weighs 4,000 pounds and you're driving an F-150, well, obviously you're going to have to rule that out. So more importantly than anything, find out what the maximum payload capacity is of your truck or the trucks that you're looking at and make sure that it can safely haul the truck camper that you're considering getting. Remember, sometimes the truck camper itself can add enough weight to the back of a pickup truck to overload the tires that are on the truck as well, and you're going to put additional wear and tear on those tires because of the additional payload. Just think about the fact that most truck campers are going to add between a ton to two and a half tons of additional weight to the back of a truck. So when I say that you really want to look at a dually if you're going to get a truck camper, I mean it simply because duallys are designed for that type of weight. If you're going to be looking at a single rear wheel, F350, F250, Chevy 3500, 2500, Ram 3500, 2500, just make sure you understand that in many cases having a 20 inch wheel on your truck is going to reduce the payload capacity of your truck versus say a 18 or 17 inch wheel. So you may find a truck that you like and you may think it's perfect, but you always want to check the payload capacity of the truck as well as the maximum payload capacity of the tires. There's generally going to be a yellow sticker right inside the door well that will tell you what payload not to exceed in the truck. And that payload rating is actually inclusive of the people and the supplies that you're going to have in the vehicle. So if you have a family of three or a family of four in the truck, you have to deduct their weight from the weight of the truck's maximum payload. In many cases, that can account for 600, 700, 800 pounds of weight. Anyways, I hope this video has been informative. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thanks everyone.